We all know we need to use more wood in appropriate applications. Wood not only stores carbon, but it has low embodied energy compared to the materials that it can replace. However, it's not as simple as just substituting out one material for another. Performance characteristics must be considered, and to be considered, they have to be understood. One of the characteristics of wood is that it decays. And while this is well known, the mechanics of the process are a little murkier in many cases. To address this, the University of Queensland Durability Centre, an initiative of FWPA, that's Forest and Wood Products Australia, is undertaking an extensive testing program across a range of timber products in a range of different environments. By extracting the DNA directly from the wood, we are able to capture more of the community of fungi that are involved in the decay process. This is a story of research, really complicated research, which needs lab coats and space-age machines dealing with DNA. But before we get to all that, we need to venture into the field to one of Queensland's wood decay facilities to find out just what's going on. And one of those testing facilities is here on the Sunshine Coast. So we're actually in Nambour, which is just up out of the Sunshine Coast, and we're on the Department of Ag and Fisheries Research Station test site. And our field site, which was just established about two and a half years ago, it's a cooperative with DAF and USC, and we're using this site to kind of evaluate the durability of timber materials. This is going to be a long-term experiment, and it's looking at many different timbers and timber products and studying exactly how they decay and break down. It's a bit like watching grass grow until you take a closer look. These have been out for about two and a half years, and it's a really simple test. You just, you pick up the timber and you just, you poke at it. And so these are examples, you can see there's quite a lot of decay here. And so I would take the material with my little pointy stick and I would poke around and I would estimate the percentage of area that's damaged by the, by the decay fungus. And I can do this for all these timbers. The purpose of looking more closely at decay is so we can optimize the choice of timber and treatments for every application, therefore maximizing the use of timber. We're looking at timber and saying, okay, it's way more environmentally positive now because it's carbon neutral, it's not gonna take a lot of energy. But if you look at how we use timber, most of what, half of what we do with timber we burn, right? We use it for fuel, but the other half, we don't use as well as we should. And about 10% of all the timber cut gets wasted. It gets used to replace things that have failed in service. And so these types of trials and understanding durability are important for trying to get people to use timber better. An example of what's on the ground here range from decking to beams to even power poles, which in themselves have a great story to tell about wear and tear. So Jeff, um, poles, big power poles, I mean people would be familiar with power poles, you see them sort of everywhere, um, and you'd think over the years they've got power poles pretty right, why are you, um, why are you looking at them? Well because there's a lot of money in power poles, right, okay, yeah. and if you, if you lose a pole, you're not going to charge a mobile. You're going to be really unhappy because <laughs> yes. your computer's not going to work. And if, you're on a, and if you're on some kind of medical equipment, you could die. So it's really important to think about poles because they bring the power to your house or to wherever you are. And even though we've been using them for well over a century, um, there's still a lot we don't necessarily know about them and there's better ways to make them last longer. And part of our system right now is we have a very aging electrical system. Most of it was put in in the 50s and 60s. It's starting to come to end of life and a lot of utilities are trying to figure out how do we make them last a little bit longer. So a lot of what we're looking at is how to do secondary treatments that'll make them, that'll stop any decay or termite attack, how to make them last longer. So these poles are part of that effort to identify different treatments that can control some of the damage inside the pole. It's quite important work. It can be, yeah. yeah. Particularly if you lose your, your mobile phone and you have no power. <laughs> or you die. Or you die, yeah. 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 Researchers are delving even deeper than a bit of wood in the ground. It's in the lab where the real secrets of decay might be unlocked and understood. So I have uh, a love of genetics and I managed to pair up with Jeff and the Forestry Institute and it was really, I felt like it was a really interesting project to look at the communities of fungi that 
come to the decaying wood. And so that's the whole point of extracting the DNA from the decaying wood is to look at those fungal communities that come over time. By extracting the DNA of fungi, which is the main enemy to timber, scientists like Linda can then understand them better, meaning a more effective way to combat them. Only trouble getting DNA out of timber is a bit like getting water out of a stone. This is really the lab, isn't it? And Linda, I've been watching you go, it's a bit like baking a cake. You know, you've got timers yep. and procedures and everything's in order. Yeah, so it's like a recipe. You've got a protocol that you have to follow. Um, the thing with DNA is it depends what you're extracting it from. Right. So if you were going to extract it from an animal tissue, yes. it's very easy to acquire a higher yield of DNA. Right. But things like wood, it's got chemicals and extractives that inhibit the DNA extraction process. So it's much more difficult to get that DNA. We can talk about some of the things we're doing with fungi and timber because in the classic sense you would take timber and isolate the fungus from it and try and figure out what it did. It's a lot of work and it takes a lot of expertise and now with some of the emerging uh, genetic techniques we can isolate the DNA, we can, we can amplify it, sequence it, identify what's in the, in the timber. That's good and bad because we don't necessarily know what we've isolated from that. We know it's there but we don't know what it's doing. So there's a lot of work that is going to go on behind the scenes to figure that out. I feel like it could contribute to the, or the tools that we already use to determine durability and preservative quantities and things like that. So we can learn what fungi appear in different climates over different time points and potentially even different wood products. So do different species of wood attract different fungi? So we want to increase that, that time frame that we can use it. So we want to understand the durability better. I think it's going to play more of a part because I think a lot of architects and engineers are really chuffed about using it. It's, it has lots of attributes. It's, it's taken a while to get them to come back to it. It also has some risk and we need to make sure they use it properly. And so a lot of our point is educating and making sure that people use material that's fit for purpose, that they understand the material characteristics so they use it properly. It's not going to be everything. It can't be. We don't have enough. So we'll always use alternative materials. It's just a matter of how we marry the materials together to optimize the building. So what we've just seen is just the tip of the iceberg, or the tip of the woodberg, as University of Queensland Durability Centre go about their work. Durability is measured in decades more often than years, and even though options can accelerate the effects of durability for research purposes, it's still a long haul for the forest and wood products industry. It's an investment though that will deliver dividends to Australia, providing optimum timber solutions for our built environment that will contribute to a low carbon future.